Good morning, YouTube, Booktube. This is Johnny. I I was sitting here in the dining room. My wife has not come home from work, and I'm writing in my diary. I'm. The other time I made a video, I said I was on page 500 and something. No, I'm on. That was incorrect. I'm on page this morning on page 459 for the year 2020. It is May the 12th, 2020. It is 740 in the morning. And I am uh, reading, as I said, uh, The Works of William Perkins, Volume 8. And I've been reading his uh, sermons on Philippians chapter 3. Uh, and the verses are 3 and 7, I think. 8 and... Let me see. It says, um... 7 and 8 of Philippians chapter... Philippians is in the New Testament. The epistle to the... The epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Philippians. And he says in chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And I was reading this part last night, and I thought I'd share it this morning. He says, Third, the last degree in Paul's creation is that Quote, he desires to be found in Christ. Here his desire is twofold. The first is to be in Christ. And the second is to be found of God in the day of judgment. First, to be in Christ is to be taken out of the first Adam and to be united unto Christ. As his very flesh or as a true member of his mystical body. Now this incorporation and union with Christ with union into Christ is a mystery and for the better understanding of, of it four rules must be observed first is that not only our souls are united to the soul or Godhead of Christ but also the whole person of him who believes is united to the whole person of Christ for the Redeemer and they who are redeemed are united together and Christ God and man redeemed us not only in soul but also in body. Therefore, we believers have our whole persons united to the whole person of Christ. And St. Paul says that our very bodies are the members of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. And Christ himself says that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood, that we may be in him and, and he in us. John chapter 6, verse 56. The second rule is touching the order of this union that we are first joined to the flesh of Christ and by his flesh to his Godhead for that which brings us to have fellowship with God joins us to God now by the flesh of Christ we have fellowship with God it is as the as the veil of the temple whereby the high priest entered into the holy of holies into the presence of God Hebrews chapter 10 verse 20 again it serves as a pipe or conduit to derive the efficacy and operation of the Godhead unto us. The third rule is that this union stands not in imagination, but is true and real conjunction. Neither does the distance of place, we being on earth and the flesh of Christ in heaven, hinder this union. The mind is united after a sort to the things of it minds. After the contract of marriage, two distinct persons being a thousand miles asunder, remain one flesh. If nature affords this much, why not the like be found in the conjunction that is above nature? The last rule is that the bond of this conjunction is one and the same spirit, both being both in Christ and us, first in Christ and then in us. St. John teaches this saying, that Christ dwells in us by his spirit given unto us. 1 John 3, 3, verse 24. Again, this Spirit works in us faith, 
which uh, also unites us to Christ, who, as Paul says, dwells in our hearts by faith. Ephesians 3, verse 17. And by this we further see that the distance of place hinders not this union. The Spirit of God, being infinite, may dwell both in Christ and in us. And our faith, though it is seated within our hearts, yet it can reach forth itself and apprehend Christ in heaven. Second desire of Paul is that he may be found of God to be in Christ. That is, that God would respect him as a member of Christ and accept him into the, his favor eternally for Christ. For the better understanding of this, the order that God uses in showing his love, love must be observed. First of all, he begins his love in Christ, whom he loves simply for himself. Then, from Christ, he descends to them who are united to Christ, considering them even as parts of Christ, whom he also loves, yet not simply, but respectively, in and for Christ. He who looks upon things of diverse kinds through a green glass beholds them to all to be green. Even so, they whom God respects in and for Christ are loved by God as he is loved and righteous as he is righteous. This is the thing which Paul desires, that in the day of judgment he may be thus respected. Hence we learn that God will make an examination of all our hearts, lives, and works in the day of judgment. For this finding which Paul mentions presupposes that God sees and observes our ways and will one day certainly discover them, knowing even now certainly whether we are in Christ or not. For this cause we are to call ourselves to an account, an account yea, to a strict, straight account, for God will find out whatever is amiss, though we have skill to make the fair shows before men, and we are and we are withal to amend ourselves. Solomon upon this ground dissuades the young man from fornication. Why shouldest thou, my son, take delight in strange women, seeing the ways of men are before the eyes of God? And he pondereth all their paths. Proverbs five verses twenty and twenty one. To this purpose the Jews have a saying worth our making. Write, say they, three things in your heart, and you shall never sin. There is an eye that sees you, an ear that hears you, and a hand that writes all your sayings and doings in a book. And the cause of our manifold sins is that men falsely think that God neither sees nor hears them. Thus David of his enemies, they brag in their talk, and swords and swords swords in their lips, for they say, Who heareth us? Psalm fifty nine verse seven. Again here we see Paul's care, yea, the pitch of all his desire in his principal forecast, that he may be found of God in the day of judgment, to be a member of Christ. The like must be our care and forecast now in the time of this life. Yea, this this must be the care of all cares that we may be knit to Christ and so accepted of God when we shall rise to judgment. Christ bids us watch and pray that you may stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21 verse 36 And we cannot do this unless we are incorporated into Christ. We are bidden first to seek the kingdom of heaven and that is indeed to be in Christ, to be wise and circumspect in many manners, yet to want for cast to compass our main and principal good is the greatest folly of all. What is the fault of the foolish virgins? They were virgins as the wise. They carried the burning lamps of Christian profession. Likewise, they had oil, that is, the oil of grace. But at last, they had not oil enough to furnish their lamps. Their fault was that they wanted to forecast to furnish themselves with sufficient oil. There is never sufficiency of oil till we are truly in members of Christ. And this was their damnable folly, that they contented themselves with the name and profession of Christ and had not a serious and special care to be members of Christ. Therefore, let us now diligently endeavor to be that in this life which we are desired to be found of God in the day of judgment. There are three judgments which we are to undergo the judgment of men, 
of ourselves and of God. The first two we may falsify, but the third we cannot. For we may deceive men, and we may deceive ourselves, but we cannot deceive God. It is the foundation of all good things to be engrafted into Christ. And for this cause, all the forecasts of our heads, all our cares and studies should give place to this, that this might be accomplished. Some man may there hereupon demand that we should do that he might be in Christ. I answer first two things. First, we must break off all his sins and turn unto God. Secondly, he, he must pray earnestly even unto the death that his heart may be knit to Christ. Again, it may be demanded how it may, may be known of us that we are in Christ. St. John answers, Hereby we know that he dwelleth in us by the Spirit which he giveth us. 1 John 4, verse 13. And we know that we have the Spirit of Christ, yet the same mind, inclination, and disposition, the like love of God and man, like meekness, patience, and obedience, are us which were in Christ. For the same fruits argue the same spirit. So I just thought I'd read a little bit of William Perkins, his comment there on Philippians 3. But what things were gained to me, these I counted lost for Christ. Yet, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, that I, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the, from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, and the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed unto his death. So I just thought I'd just share those thoughts of William Perkins this morning, and until next time, Bye.